Hi church family, it has been way too long since I've been able to see your smiling faces in person, but I hope you are doing okay um, and keeping heart. I have to admit, when this whole quarantine thing started, it was difficult. The slower pace of life always felt um, like I was stagnant, that I should be doing something else, that, um, that I wasn't being productive. But in the last couple of weeks, I can say that I have been able to enjoy just being and um, enjoying the moment. Small things caught my catch my attention and um, kind of bring joy and a peace into my heart. This morning I saw that one of my flowers, my dahlias, had sprung up from the ground and that was really exciting and um, usually in everyday life would bring less joy than it did today so I'm really thankful for that. Other things that I've been thankful for over the last couple of weeks is the ability to catch up with old friends um, via Zoom or call. Um, in everyday life, I often felt too busy to spend the time to connect with other people. And so um, it's been a blessing to be able to just sit for hours um, and catch up with old friends, um, see what their lives are like, make sure they're doing okay. So that has been great. Another thing um, I've really enjoyed are just mornings. Enjoying the stillness of the morning, kind of alone in my thoughts and in prayer with a hot tea and just enjoying the yard. Um, it's been a blessing, a surprise and a blessing in this, in this climate of fear and doubt and anxiety um, to have just the small things. Um, there's a verse that has kind of kept me grounded and given me peace during this time, and I wanted to share it with you. It's John 16, 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And um, that has given me a lot of peace and understanding during this time, and I hope it gives you the same. Now let's listen to Pastor Phil as he gives us an encouraging message. Take care. Do you see what's behind me? No, not the lights. No, not the doors. No, not that chair or this kitty whale swimming pool. No, not all that. Do you see that? That up there, right up above. I can't even zoom in, but it's literally above my head. You know what that is? It's the moon. The moon's an interesting thing. It literally has no source of light of its own to emanate. None. It doesn't generate light. It isn't energy producing like that. No, nope, not at all. What it does, it shines the light of the sun. The way the earth is in its circumference and roundness and the way it's positioned, it literally just shines the light of the sun to the earth, to us. Right now, I want to encourage you to remember the significance of that. I want you to remember, this is the season to be shining like the moon. Not trying to shine like the sun. I know there's songs about that, but that's not your role. You are not the Savior. You're not the one who's going to give people hope and meaning in their darkest moment of despair. Well, you can be, but I hope that it is with something of greater significance than simply your wisdom, but that you generate no light of your own, but that you lead people to the hope that you've found in Jesus. You see, Jesus, I believe, is the way, the answer, the truth, the hope, and the life. I am the way, Jesus says. But he also tells us he is the light. There was a moment in Jerusalem when everyone had gathered there for Passover time and every courtyard like this one here was just full of light, beautiful light. Now you're talking about a place in a world that was completely dark at night, dark, and the only thing you could see would be the moon. But it was at this time that every courtyard was lit with candles and the temple was shining and it was in this place that Jesus used that as a example. And he said, you see how every courtyard is lit here? I want you to remember this. I am the light. I am that great light. Right now, people are dealing with darkness. 
They can't even see the moon. But they might be able to see you. And you might be able to be like the moon to them. You might be able to shine the light of Christ. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to me. And so what is your role in this world, in this time? It is to be like the moon, to lift up the light of Christ to people. Some of you recognize that, man, you've been blessed with so much. You've been given so much in this life. There are people that are hungering around the world. Could you find an organization to donate to? There are people starving in your local communities and food banks are running out of food. Could you put something in them? Could you find a church that's dealing with issues of finances right now and bless them? Could you think about your neighbor next door and who's dealing with some issues that maybe you don't even know, but you've never even taken the time to ask? Right now is the time to shine the light of Christ. Be the feet, the hands of Jesus to people in the world. Be the moon. Shine the light that is not yours, but that's been placed in you by the cross by the significance of what Jesus did in your life. I want you to remember, this is the opportunity to share. Some of you are wondering, what do I mean by that? This is a receptive moment. This is in a time and place when people are more open to the gospel. It's receptive moments. These are times when people are dealing with difficulty, trial, transition, hopelessness, despair. The most searched words right now on Google are prayer, hope, meaning. Now, this is the time when you can offer that if you found that in Jesus. I'm telling you, I became a Christian when I was 19. It changed my life forever. Now, I knew I grew up in a religious family and a home, but it was nothing really in here. I'd never really been converted by Christ. I never really had him in my heart like that at 19. That changed everything. I've been living a life of peace. I kid you not, peace. Why? Because I put my trust in someone who ultimately loves me more than anyone else on this earth. Someone who created me. Isaiah and Jeremiah, the prophets in the Old Testament say that he formed us in our mother's womb. Literally, the creator has a plan for your life. He loves you so much. He's got so much in store for you. And guess what? When you find that hope, then you got to pass that on. You've been blessed to be a blessing. Don't forget that. This is not about just you making it in life. It's about how you can make it with all of your friends. It's about how you can make it and everyone around you. It's about sharing the blessing found in Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's kind of hard, but the scriptures say that Jesus is the door. He says, I am the door. And anyone who enters through me gets into the blessing. Now, some of you are like, man, that's really limiting. That's really kind of putting me off just through Jesus only. Yeah, why? Because he's the creator. People who say they don't want to choose Christ or don't want to believe that there's an intelligent designer behind it all are choosing themselves. They're choosing self. And guess what? You can choose self all you want in this life. But I'm telling you, friend, you're missing out one of the biggest blessings you'll ever have in your life. Someone who's on your side. Someone who has your back. Someone who's pro uh, provided for every need you have in your life. Now, it may not be every want you want in your life, but it will be every need. Now you're saying to me, well, listen, I've tried this whole Christianity thing and all these hypocrites. Don't be looking at the hypocrites. We're all sinners and messed up. You keep your eyes on the sun, you know, because sometimes that moon will lead you astray. It will. Why? You know what eclipses are? That's when the earth gets in the way and you can't see the sun because you're looking at the wrong thing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You will make it. And so I encourage you, if you're a believer, shine Christ. If you're not a believer, choose to test him right now. Journey with him. Look into his life. And if you are someone who's been walking away from faith, I want to encourage you, get back. Get back. Now is the time. We don't know when Jesus is coming. He may come tomorrow. He may come further away. 
But this is the season of grace when we are called to choose for Christ. Choose for him today. He loves you. He does have a plan for you. In your darkness, there is a light there. And it's the light of Christ. And he wants to be part of your life. Would you accept him today? Would you allow him to be part of your life? I want to pray for you. That God would bless you right now. I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm going to throw my hand out there. Jesus, would you bless whoever's listening and watching tonight? God, be with them. Encourage them. Lift them. Cast them to see. They need to fall on the rock. And the rock is Christ who will provide everything they need in this season and time. It may not be every want, but it will be enough. Because their peace is set in the Savior the one who has gone before them, the one who is preparing a place for them. God, we know eternity is going to be beautiful. And Father, we want to be ready for when you come again. Jesus, would you sanctify our hearts? God, I pray that you would be with everyone who's struggling right now to make a decision for you or make a recommitment to you. Father, give them the strength that they don't have in them of themselves. Jesus, I want to pray over that person right now who's anticipating making a decision but not sure what it's going to look like. God, give them the faith they need founded in you. And Lord, I pray if there's someone here tonight who's been walking with Jesus for a long time, Lord, would you encourage them to know who to reach out to and how to be the moon, how to shine the sun. Father, we thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friend, love you, care for you. And I want to encourage you, be a blessing. You've been given a lot in this life. There are a lot of people hurting. And you can be a conduit of love and hope and peace. Blessings. Blessings.